Joshua was, uh, he joined the Navy in 2005, right, out, right after graduating high school. Uh, and he was one of the first to volunteer to become a uh, riverine. He quickly became petty officer second class. Uh, and he, uh, after joining the Navy, uh, he had set some goals for himself and he wanted to make a career of the Navy. He was complaining about loss of hearing in his right ear, which he thought was due to firing rifles and not using hearing protection. Um, but it turned out he had a, a tumor in his, um, in his brain. So his whole career objective that he had you know, decided it kind of went down the tubes. His, uh, his demeanor dropped and I think he had gotten addicted to painkillers. When we become isolated from others, we are in real trouble. Uh, a lot of mental health, it, yes, you have to make the choices that lead there. But you're never alone. You can take the journey with other people. You can have partnerships, friendships, teamwork. Teamwork is huge, both in the Navy for accomplishing things and also for a sense of uh, your value as part of the team and your own self-esteem when you're, when you're a member of a functioning team. And then March 15th, I got a call from his wife. And she was in Texas. She said she just hung up the phone with Josh and he didn't sound very good. Um, and I said, what do you mean? And she said, well, he, it sounds like he wants to kill himself. And I got on the phone and called him. So one of the things we can do to notice when other people aren't doing particularly well is we can notice when they start getting isolated and um, we can reach out a little bit. And we can also notice it ourselves. When we're starting to feel isolated, disconnected, we need to make that first important step toward reaching out to other people and friends. And, and I, I think, hands down, people are ready to extend a hand and help. When he, uh, answer, he did answer after several rings, and I thought, oh great, you know, everything's going to be all right. But as soon as I heard his voice, uh, I knew that it wasn't okay, and uh, he was in tears, crying, and he never, ever uh, talked to me that way. We talked for 15 minutes. I tried to keep him on the phone as long as I could, and uh, his voice was weak the entire 15 minutes until finally, with strength in his voice, he said, Dad, I love you, I gotta go, and he hung the phone up. And I quickly called 911, and then I tried calling him back uh, after I was on, after I gave them the information, and uh, he didn't answer, so. And it was about an hour later, his best friend called me in tears, and, and I had already known, like I knew, I just could tell that he was serious and he was going to take his life. And um, The family members of suicidal individuals are really on pins and needles. And the, one of the great things we can do for one another is come forward and say, I want to make a promise to you. I want to make a solemn promise. I promise you. I promise my commanding officer. I promise my friends, I promise my wife, I promise my children, you don't have to worry about me. I will not take my life. I will work on my life. I make a commitment to living life. If you need help, I'll be happy to, absolutely happy to help you. And if I need help, I make a commitment to tell you, hey, I need some help. Because we're not alone.